Hello Hunters, welcome to Super Fan Natural. Hunters, this Christmas I received a very special gift. My wonderful wife got me a replica of the demon killing knife, something that I've wanted for many years. Now, finally holding it in my hands, I'm once again left wondering, how does it work? Well, not this one, this is just a recreation off of Etsy. The one in the show, why is it able to kill demons? Also, why is there only one? Surely such a powerful tool would be worth mass production. In this video, we'll go through the history and use of the knife as we attempt to get to the bottom of this mystery. The demon killing knife of the Kurds, also called the demon knife or ruby's knife, is one of the most iconic weapons in Supernatural. Not just because it looks cool, but also because it has special properties. Unlike normal cutlery, the demon killing knife can, and follow me on this one, kill demons. I know, you'd never guess. It's really easy to use too, all you gotta do is poke the host body somewhere particularly fatal, like the heart or the throat, and bam. The demon is vaporized and the shreds of its soul or consciousness or whatever are sent to the empty forever. This doesn't work with ordinary human weapons. All that does is ensure that the person who's possessed will die once the demon leaves their body. Yeah, the knife also kills the host, unlike an exorcism. However, hosts don't have a particularly good odds of surviving a possession in the first place. Demons are cruel, they enjoy hurting their victims, and many intentionally cause fatal injuries to their meat suit. Also, an exorcism doesn't kill the demon, it just sends them back to hell, which they can escape from. So yeah, the knife is cruel but effective. At least against demons. When pitted against basically anything else, it's essentially just a normal knife. It can kill hellhounds for some reason, and it can cut the fingers off of horsemen, but to be fair, we don't really know that you can't do that with a regular blade. In Season 8, we see that while Dean was in Purgatory, he used the knife to kill a Rougarou, which is pretty weird. We were told by a guy who's hunted Rougarous that fire is the only thing that's supposed to hurt them. I can't imagine that he didn't try stabbing them. But maybe the rules are a little different in Purgatory. After all, Leviathans can also be killed much easier there. But other than those special exceptions, the knife is really only useful against demons. And even then, not all demons are susceptible to it. There are four that we know of that have some level of resistance or even outright immunity to the knife. Abaddon, Alistair, Ramiel, and Cain. Cain is the only one who seems completely unaffected by the knife, like he doesn't even flicker after being poked. That makes sense, as he had the mark of Cain, which makes its bearer almost completely unkillable. Ramiel also makes sense, as he's one of the Princes of Hell, which were the first generation of demons after Lilith, handmade by Lucifer himself. This also means that the other three princes, Azazel, Dagon, and Asmodeus, would probably be immune to the knife also. Abaddon is a little weird. She was a knight of hell, which were trained by Cain, so maybe he conferred some of his mark-related immunity to his students, I don't know. Of the four, she's the most affected by the blade. Alistair is the one we know the least about, at least regarding his rank. He was hell's main torturer and the only other white-eyed demon besides Lilith, Though we don't actually know what that means other than he's probably pretty old and powerful. We never really find out where the knife came from. When it first shows up in Season 3, Ruby just has it. There really wasn't any info about its history until Season 8 when Henry reveals that it's called the Ancient Demon Killing Knife of the Kurds. Well, it might be called that. Henry throws out that title, but Dean is the one who claims that that's what the knife is, which feels kind of weird. Uh, unless he got some info off screen, I don't really know how he would know that. Also, even if it's right, it's worth noting that the knife could be of the Kurds in the same way that it was Ruby's knife. Some Kurds might just have owned it at some point and it became associated with them. Anyway, Ruby has the knife until the season 3 finale when Dean snags it from her, at which point it becomes the Winchester's go-to anti-demon weapon until about season 8 or 9. Once it's revealed that angel blades could kill demons, they gradually get used more and more, and the knife less and less. Still, it made at least one appearance in each season after Season 2, and scored a rough total of 60 kills, including 56 demons, one hellhound, two non-possessed humans, and one Rougarou. Yeah, I got some kill count facts for you. Put me on the show, James. I'll do a supernatural kill count just for you. 15 seasons all for you. All I ask is for your love and maybe an appearance on your podcast. <clears throat> Anyway, that's the rough history of the knife, but how does it work? What gives it its demicidal powers, and why hasn't anyone made another? It's possible that the blade or the handle are made of some special magical material, but the most obvious source of its magical powers are these symbols. 
After all, words and symbols have a lot of power in the world of Supernatural, especially against spiritual beings like demons. So what do they mean? Well, in reality, they don't mean anything. It's just a gibberish language that someone in the props department scribbled onto the blade in order to give it an air of mysticism. Likewise, the show also never gives an explanation for what they mean, and nobody seems to recognize the language. This is by design, as series creator Eric Kripke wanted the knife to remain a mystery. So dead end, right? Well, maybe not. This is all speculation, but I think I found a way to connect the knife to another magical blade, specifically the first blade, or even more specifically, the mark that powers it. Look at the mark of Cain. Maybe I'm crazy, but to me it doesn't look all that different from the symbols on the knife. Like they look like they could be part of the same alphabet. If you don't believe me, then why don't you take a closer look at the symbol closest to the tip? If you look at it at just the right angle, it looks very, very similar to the mark. This wouldn't be the first connection the mark has to demons, as it literally turns its bearer into one. How that works is never explained. It's weird though, because demons are supposed to come from Lucifer, and while he was the first one to bear the mark, there's no indication that he did something to it in order to add this effect. I think that some of the darkness's power slips through the mark and into its bearer, whispering to their soul, twisting it and turning them in darker and more violent until they're ultimately killed and converted into a demon. When Lucy had the mark, he felt its effects, and as an archangel he could possibly perceive it in a way that humans can't. When he decided to corrupt one of God's precious humans, he did so by exposing her to the mark's effect, either channeling it into her directly or recreating it with his powers. It's like a spell, and if you were capable of writing it out in its purest form, it would take the shape of symbols like these. I don't know if it's the language of God, or the darkness, or the soul itself. Maybe all of them, but whatever it is, it can manipulate the soul in a way that's pretty rare. I believe that the knife can kill demons because it's imbued with the same kind of power that created them. Except, you know, it explodes them instead. We can only guess as to how it was made, but I'm pretty sure it's not as simple as drawing some symbols on a knife. The most obvious answer is that the symbols get etched in, and then they need to a spell or something to activate them. But that's boring. Let's think outside the box. One idea I had is that maybe you have to kill a demon through some other means, and then use a separate spell or ritual to capture the effect within the blade, which causes the symbols to be etched in. It's kind of like the dragon killing swords. You need the blood of a dragon to make one, so essentially you need to kill a dragon in order to make a dragon killing sword. There's an obvious counter to this idea, that being, why would you need to make a knife if you already have a way of killing demons? And the answer is, well there's a few reasons. Whoever made the knife might have only known of one way to kill demons, which could have been time consuming or required special ingredients that were hard to obtain. By contrast, the knife is quick and ready, just getting close and pokey pokey. One possibility is that the knife was made using the Virgin Sacrifice spell from Season 3. If you don't recall, Ruby claimed to know a spell that could vaporize multiple demons, including the one who cast it. We don't know what all was required, but we do know that it involved cutting out the heart of a virgin, which most people aren't okay with, and could explain why there aren't thousands of these things. It's worth noting that that spell would allegedly destroy the demons without affecting the hosts, which the knife also kinda does. Yeah, most people who get stuck with it die, but that's not because of the knife's magical effect, but rather the whole getting poked in a vital organ. That's actually kinda rare, as other demon killing methods like demon bombs and angelic smiting damage the host body completely beyond repair. So the odds of surviving aren't great, but at least there's a chance. Also, I wonder what happens if you poke a meat suit while the demon is smoking out. Like, you jab them before they fully vacate the body. Does that hurt the demon? Kill the demon? I don't know, but I think it would be worth a shot, especially if the host is already a goner. Also, what happens if you poke an Achiri demon? You know, the ones that can kind of form their own body? Would they just kind of poof, like Ramiel did? Probably. Alright, there's more I could say, but I think that's enough for today. If you liked what you saw, then you know what to do, I don't have to tell you. If you want to hear about a bunch of other topics, then go ahead and check out my other channel, Look What You Learned, where I talk about basically anything that I want. I'm going to be honest, I don't really know what the upload schedule is going to be for this channel, but for now, it's just going to be whenever I finish a video. I'll have more for you soon, but for now, carry on.